All right, you're used to the daily showers and the weather watches. Matt Makins here, and I know I'm an idiot for posting this video, but bear with me. Your snow forecast for the winter ahead is coming your way. There's going to be some meteorologists watching that are shaking their heads saying, Matt, just don't, don't do it. Don't do it, buddy. Stop. But there's actually some science that we can apply to the winter forecast. I love YouTube videos. I love looking for the weather ones. And there are some great weather ones for the winter projection and snow forecast and severe weather tracking, those kind of things that actually apply quite a bit of science to it. And they're great. There are other ones that usually get a lot more views and will get a lot more views than this one that absolutely apply no science whatsoever to their winter forecasts and they're screaming for four feet of snow in Hawaii and all this kind of garbage to just generate some likes and clicks and subscribe notes. Here's the thing. We can, knowing that in a lot of cases seasonal weather projections are going to be wrong in some areas, you can apply a lot of science. So some of those YouTube videos that even you have maybe already watched some of the better ones look at the winter ahead from right now this perspective look forward to that winter and how do they base their forecast a lot of them look at the almanac what is climatology what happened the last 30 years and apply that kind of knowledge to a forecast and if you're a weather buff you know that if you're looking at a long range planner let's say 7 10 15 days in the future as you go forward in time, model projections go down, and what becomes the most accurate weather source for a forecast basis? The almanac data. Where do we trend historically usually becomes at a point the most accurate forecast basis. But we can take that and uh, apply even more knowledge to it. And how do we do that? In this video, and remember, like and subscribe to help me out and beat some of those hype-driven videos out there, uh, in this video, we're going to take the science of applying an almanac-based, climatology-based forecast and apply it to this winter in terms of a temperature outlook, a, a precipitation outlook, and a snowfall outlook. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we know that as we go throughout time, the almanac, the climatology, becomes more and more accurate the farther out you look, it can be a great baseline. But we know we can apply some additional knowledge to that. We know that we're not in an El Nino year now, so let's take the El Nino years out of the mix. We know that there are certain other variables at play here, like how the Atlantic has been behaving since roughly 2000 or so. That's the AMO cycle, worthy of another video all of itself. But how you apply how the Atlantic Ocean is behaving in terms of the AMO, again, it switched right around 2000, how the Pacific is behaving, and our ENSO region, that behavior, you can begin to take some of those years out of climatology that just don't fit. And other years start to rise to the top of being a better basis, historically speaking, for the forecast going forward. Maybe those years on your list would include like 2001, 2013. Both had low counts hurricane-wise, both years started to trend away from La Nina. Uh, 2013 rapidly went into an El Nino the following year. Maybe that's a good basis for a forecast. Other years probably include La Nina holding on, like a 2020 or a 2021. What we're doing here to form this forecast is take the climatology, take our history. Let's weed out the bad years and apply the good ones. So the forecast you are about to see, I did that. I thought as we go throughout winter, December, January, February, we're very much likely still in a La Nina-esque phase, but perhaps heading into neutral territory. Once we hit next spring, March and April, where are we likely to be? Most likely in neutral ground. So take away the strong El Ninos, take away the strong La Ninas. But I do think there's a hint, just a hint of flavor that El Nino may come in a little bit quicker than advertised. So out of all of these factors running through my brain, I basically came up with an analog list of years, an analog forecast, historically based forecast, that includes years that are La Nina driven, moving into neutral territory with a hint, just a slight spice of El Nino late in the season. That's how I created the list. So if you break down those years, what do we have? Well, you have this for November, 2022 through April 2023, most likely very cold for the Northern Plains all the way down to the South through Texas. Very warm for the Southwest, that's classic for La Nina, and warm out across the North and East. Now should my analog years 
not favor El Nino strongly enough, this will be a bust. But it's a good to have a blend of some of these possibilities. The possible territory will be in, in the ENSO phase for the midwinter into the spring. And that's the basis of the forecast you see here. And this is pretty similar to a lot of other forecasts that you've maybe watched on YouTube or, or grabbed from a magazine or some other publication. So it's not too far off. And it's based on history. It's based on an analog forecast or the climatology kind of based forecast. What about precipitation? Very La Nina in this style. What does that mean? La Nina, classically in the winter, is you don't have a, a jet stream racing across the southern U.S. So that's usually where you're going to have dry weather. And that will be drier than average from California all the way out to the east. Where do you normally have pockets of moisture during La Nina winters and early springs? You normally have that in the Pacific Northwest early on and then shifting into the northern Rockies. You'll also have some hit and miss areas of moisture coming out of the prairies of Canada into the Great Lakes region. And potentially sometimes you can get some pretty good moisture in far northeastern U.S. Potentially. So that's your precip outlook. And that's very much based on La Nina years heading into neutral years. Not much of an El Nino impact as you go through April of 23, 2023, I should say. Now, if you look at that in terms of snowfall, you know, those were just temperatures and precipitation. Precipitation being all-encompassing, ice, rain, and snow. What if we just look at snow? Here's the snow climatology of just the analog forecast years. Just the hand-picked years that best match where we are going. So that's 2022 to 2023, and this is based on the entire snowfall season, and these are snowfall totals. And I'll, I'll likely publish this image down there in the comments section. And that way you can take a closer look, because it's kind of hard to determine things here. But as you look at that, what does this mean? I mean, this is, may not be too far off the mark, average. Maybe it's drier than average. Maybe it's wetter than average. So let's apply that. Let's look at areas where the winter ahead may be snowier or less snow coming our way for this winter. I, I say winter. Meteorologically, winter is December, January, February. Let's use winter in this terms of November going through April, our snow season. What's our snow season looking like for this year? Well, we're likely drier than average throughout the central and, and parts of the northern Rockies, too. you got heavier snowfall in sections of Washington, uh, Montana, and northern Idaho. Potentially, we can have some heavier snowfall that develops later in the season for the upper Midwest. And some hit and miss pockets here, uh, largely lake effect snow and otherwise uh, there across the northeast. But let's zoom into the the Rocky Mountain West here. This is very similar to what we had the last couple of years, anyway, uh, this La Nina regime we've been in. So it's not too far off the mark in that regard. California, off into Utah and Colorado, largely a, a drier than average snowfall season ahead. Unless we see a radical shift into El Nino, that's not likely to change at all. We start to see a little hint of some snowier conditions there, uh, parts of the Cascades, northern Rockies throughout Montana and Idaho. So you can see that this analog-based forecast, this snowfall-based winter projection that we have here, it's taking what we know to be the more accurate, more accurate than model projections, is history, that almanac, that climatology. And then you take that climatology and you apply science to it to eliminate those years that just don't fit, like the big El Nino years. They don't fit for this winter. So let's grab the years that do make most sense, and that's the forecast I just showed you, an analog-based, history-based forecast going forward in time for this winter. So winter 2022 into winter 2023, and the snow season ahead likely fitting not too far off the mark from the last couple of years, largely driven by La Nina early on, then transitioning into new neutral territory. So that's your snow forecast. There are some meteorologists out there that are still watching and they're still shaking their heads saying, oh, Matt, don't publish this video. But you know what? I'm about to hit publish. Boop! Hope you hit subscribe and like. I'll be giving you snowfall updates as we go throughout this season. Let's see how this forecast pans out. Again, a history-based analog forecast. I'm Matt Makins. See you next time.